Hey guys, a lot of people have asked me what I'm using for pest control and what I'm doing to supplement the necessary calcium, potassium, and iron in my aquaponic system. The leaf you're looking at here was uh, all the dead black spots that you see were aphids yesterday. And I applied the wood vinegar, which is what I'm using for pest control yesterday. And this is what they look like today. It killed everything. Um, this is another leaf that Earlier it had some aphids that were alive. You can kind of see the white. Yeah, there's little white ones there. That's what they looked like when they were alive. So the wood vinegar does a good job. Now it's supposed to be organic. Basically, it's a kind of a still process. A still, in which you'd make alcohol where they burn off the wood and through a series of cooling pipes, they condensate the product of wood vinegar. I did a quick search on Amazon and I wasn't able to see that it was even for sale in the West. This is readily available locally in my little egg shops or garden shops or whatever. And uh, it smells just like a, a vinegar wood. It's really like a the texture of a, like a molasses or it's very syrupy, very thick. And uh, it just takes a little bit. And of course you mix it with water and then apply it. And the studies that they've done say that it's um, perfectly acceptable for everything in the food chain with the exception of fish. If you put a bunch of this in your aquaponics water, you're probably going to have some fish that die. There you can see the consistency. Um, again, not real useful if you're not in Southeast Asia because I couldn't find it online, um, at least on Amazon. But it's pretty good stuff. Uh, other benefits of wood vinegar supposedly are uh, the benefit to composting. It increases the speed at which things compost. Apparently the bacteria like it. Um, root nematodes, but again, if you're running aquaponics, don't dump it in your water for your nematodes because it's going to kill your fish. I spray it uh, fo fo foliarily. I sprayed it on the leaves and I don't have any issues. I've never had a fish die because I sprayed it with wood vinegar. Um, as far as supplementing my other micronutrient needs, I use this product which I found locally and this is more or less a hydroponic solution containing all of the micronutrients. I'll try to get in here and you can see calcium, nitrogen, boron, magnesium, iron, potassium, phosphorus, copper, and zinc, and, and of course they're relevant percentages in this solution. Um, I just mix a very, very small amount. I fill this uh, cap to here, right in here. The recommended dosage is something like 10 cc to 20 liters of water. 20 liters is approximately a gallon of water, or excuse me, 20 liters is approximately four gallons of water, five gallons of water, five gallons of water. So, yeah, that's pretty much the deal. Um, I just fill it up to this cap full, and then I'll mix it with a um, few liters of water, and then off we go. I'll spray them. Now, so of course, somebody out there is going to be like, oh, well, you're not growing organically if you're using this hydroponic. Well, maybe not, but we've been eating nitrogen in terms of plants for 60 years, and I don't think anybody's died from it yet. Um, I don't get too hemmed up on the organic... I mean, I like knowing what's been put on my plants, of course, but I'm not a diehard. I'm not going out and seeking, you know, organic fish food so everything can be completely organic. You have to make some shortcuts somewhere unless you're willing to pay for what it's going to cost you to source organic fish food and completely organic supplements. Uh, I just, for me, it's, it's overkill. I know a lot of folks, it's a big uh, hot point, but... I feel pretty good knowing exactly what's going on my the food that I'm putting in my body and that I'm giving or selling to other people. So that being said, I don't need the nitrogen. I don't need all these other micronutrients because they are already in the fish food, but this is what was readily available. And it does have my calcium, it does have my potassium, and it does have my iron. Uh, if I if I encounter a serious iron deficiency, I also have chelated iron, which I'll put into my water directly. This stuff I have put into the water, it did not kill the fish, but I feel that spray, spraying on the leaves is much more effective in terms of guaranteeing those nutrients go where they need to go, when they need to go there. Um, when my tomatoes are uh, entering a flowering stage, I'll often hit them with this for the extra potassium. Um, if I see an iron deficiency, the yellowing of the leaves, then I'll go ahead and hit them 
This is 12% iron, it's quite good. It's 35% calcium. It's primarily a calcium supplement. That's why it's called Calcium Plus. But these other things are by no means hurting me. So a little bit of nitrogen, six, they say 6%. Um, yeah, so it works pretty well. All right, so in an attempt to utilize all of my grow bed space, I have sort of created a microclimate here, which is a really fancy word for saying I've got big ass cucumbers which are providing lots of shade underneath. So I've got ahead and put in some lettuce. Well, that one doesn't look very hot at the moment. He might die. Um, the birds still come in here. The, the little sparrows, I can't keep them out. And they like to eat the lettuce. Here's a one that's healthier. And so I've got to keep these little lids on them, which is just another net pot, on top of the net pot that they're in. And that will keep the sparrows from getting to them. Once the lettuce start to get a little bit bigger, and by a little bigger I mean one to two inches, the birds, for whatever reason, they just leave them alone. These are more tomatoes, of course. These are uh, mortgage lifters, I believe. Yep, mortgage lifters here and black Russians there. These seeds were sent to me by Totterdale91. I'll put his link uh, in, the, in the video. So thanks for that, Brendan. These are all doing very well. I had nearly 100% germination on all these seedlings, and they're coming along. So hopefully in another, uh, if I'm really super lucky, two to three weeks, probably more like a month, I can put them into the aquaponics system. And just a quick shot at the rest of the growth. Um, most of you guys have seen these several times in the videos. Um, these are a Scotland yellow. These are pink brandy wines. Um, you can tell by the leaves, the potato leaves, very prolific on the brandy wines versus our traditional tomato leaves here on the Scotlands. These were sent to me by a seed company. They were supposed to be jalapenos. I contacted them and said, hey guys, these aren't jalapenos. They're like, yeah, they're not. That's definitely a tomato. It appears to be some kind of cherry, but I have so many flowers, but very little fruit has set. I think a lot of that's contributed to the heat or they're just not quite set yet maybe they'll still come I'm not getting a lot of blossom drop but here's a little cherry you can see that has been set and it, it's almost like a grape like a grape cherry but we'll see if I like a, the taste of the fruit then I'll plant more if I don't I'll just simply pull them out and of course I got more lettuce down here as well and they're doing pretty good they're coming along slowly but surely All right, more seedlings. I've got sun golds. These are Johnny seeds. Sun golds. Nope, these are actually Rebelskis. These are supposed to be some kind of hybrid French, hybrid tomato that was developed for the French market, and these things were expensive. I want to say it was like $15 for 15 seeds, and they actually ended up giving me more than that. They gave me like 17 seeds, 16 or 17, so. We'll see how they do. They're supposed to be phenomenal tomatoes, disease resistant. For fifteen, for a dollar a seed, I hope that's true. And then these are the sun golds here. And I got some peppers started. Those are probably going to die. I can't, I can't grow a pepper to save my life. These ones back here that look like pink brandy wines, very prolific tomato leaves. Those are triple L crop, triple L crop. So we'll see how those do. Some of them are just developing flowers, but everything's coming along pretty well. All right, in here you can see the fish. I yesterday put in 50, approximately, I didn't count them, about 50 more fish that I got for free. They were floating around in a little pond at the wife's uh, workplace, so um, I just threw them in here. They were free, they were very healthy, and uh, my nitrates, in the last video, I, I did a water test for you guys, and I showed you on the, on the card that it was something like 160 parts per million on the nitrates. That was an absolute falsehood. I was using a salt water test kit, which is fine for fresh water, but you need to look at the fresh water test kit card, which I didn't have. So I got online, they're freely available, and it turns out my nitrates at that time were somewhere between 20 and 40 ppm, which is much more realistic and much better overall. 160 would be way too high. I've never even met anyone that has gotten that high of nitrates in an aquaponic system. I think that would be hard to pull off. 
That being said, I did another test three days ago and my nitrates had fallen all the way down to 10 parts per million, um, which is fine. So I know that I can handle more fish because my nitrates dropped between 10 and 20 ppm based on the growth of these new plants and I still have a lot of plants that are going to be going in. All of these Dutch buckets still need to have plants placed into them. And I've got two more grow beds that will be filled with tomatoes as well. So tomatoes, cucumbers, all of these things being heavy feeders, they're going to eat those nitrates. So I wasn't concerned about adding the additional fish. My system can certainly handle it. I am confident of that. Okay, so that being said, I am going to take you to another location away from the house and tell you about a new project that I have underway or that will be underway shortly. One other thing that I did change in the last couple weeks or so is I moved my direct feed line from my Dutch buckets to the front of the system. Previously, it had been running behind the buckets, out of sight, out of mind, and that was fine. However, my, my little... Um, spaghetti tubes were getting clogged. So what I'd have to do is pull pull the spaghetti tube out of the main line and whatever was hung up on it would flush out. It's usually like I've got a, a Tibetan Mastiff that's shedding and there's hair everywhere. And sometimes she walks by the sump tanks and the hair gets in there or whatever, fish poop, but they were clogging up. So I had to um, pull them off there to get the debris clear and it wasn't very convenient to do behind the buckets especially when the tomatoes get bigger it's just not going to be a good deal so I put the tube in front and that should rectify um, some of the access issues and I also put a little filter that that comes with the fish pump if you buy this little little like you know I think this one's a 5,000 liter per hour fish pump um, they come with a little filter, at least the ones I bought did. So I went ahead and put that on the filter and that has made a dramatic difference. I was getting clogs every one to three days, whereas now I've been running the filter and I haven't had a clog at all in almost 10 days. So that's gonna work out a lot better. And then if I do wanna clean out the filter, that's all I've got to do is go to the one filter point on the pump, clean that out, and I don't have to worry about all this shit getting into my feed tubes. All right, last note on the brandy wine. You can see that some of these blossoms have dropped. That's not really all that shocking. It's hotter than Africa out here right now. It's like 100 degrees, 80% humidity. It's just not very comfortable at all. And these brandy wines do not like it. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is pruning, pruning this off. That'll give me one single stem. What I was trying to do is leave everything and then say, okay, well, let me see where the fruit sets and then I'll trim. But I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. So I'm, some of these are still looking pretty strong. If you touch them, like you can see this one doesn't look very good. Some of these, if you kind of rub them and see that they're loose, then that blossom's probably going to drop. But we'll see what happens. Hopefully I'll get some fruit here. And then on this side, I've got three, three stems. And once again, I'm like, well, let me see where the, where the fruit sets. But the fruit's not sitting, it's actually dropping blossoms. See, this cluster of flowers has all fallen off with the exception of this one. So I think I'm just gonna actually cut all of this right here and just leave the main stem where I've still got some blossoms that may potentially develop. Uh, I don't wanna cut that though, those could set. Well yeah, it's just trial and error guys. What I was really trying to do is get some shade net up there. It's a product called Illuminet and it's a shade net which consists of aluminum pieces that are actually woven into the net and they only block 40 to 50 percent of the sunlight you can choose two options 40 or 50 percent uh, the product seems very very good in terms of not blocking the light but it's a, the aluminum in the net is absorbing that heat and is then being dissipated at the roof level before it's get all that light energy is getting to your plants um, I tried I'm trying to buy it I'm trying to get it but these companies over here are not like what we deal with in the West it's this big game of questions that are completely unrelated to what you're trying to buy and then you just think that the deal has been closed and you're waiting for a final invoice and you can send payment and then they just fall off the map again so it's kind of a game where you have to beg them to buy their product and hopefully they're interested enough to make money to sell it to you. It's extremely frustrating. Um, the only other shade net option I have is a 70% shade net, which I'd have to put on the roof 
and I don't want to block 70% of the light. I only get six hours as it is in this area, and it's very intense sun, but I don't want to throw 70% shade net over the whole thing to keep these plants cool because then I'm going to be battling light issues, potentially. Maybe they'd be fine. I don't know. I can try it, but it's no easy chore getting up on top of there and putting shade net, so I'm trying to get the product that I want. It's something like six hundred dollars almost six hundred dollars per roll it's a hundred meter roll two meters wide and um yeah I, it, it's just frustrating guys because you have to find a local shop or somebody with an english web presence because i don't speak or write read or write thai um that that has these products available and then you have to try to negotiate the purchase and the reason for the high cost is because it's an imported product and the government taxes the fuck out of anything that's imported. Um, so if they don't produce it in the country, and the production means are no, by no means phenomenal in terms of uh, you know, product availability, then you're going to pay the price. And I'll, I'll pay it. I don't care. If it drops my temperatures 5 degrees, then that's good to go. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'll pay the cost and I have another project anyways in which I could use more of that net. The challenge is just getting getting the product. Here's some of the cucumbers. They're coming along. This guy's probably uh, six inches or so. I'll let him get about eight inches. These are straight eight, so I'll let him get about eight inches and pull them off there. See how they taste. Um, you guys know what a tomato looks like. I'm not going to scavenge through here and show you every single or cucumber rather. So that's that. But they're growing very good. They're all the way to the top, and they're trying to figure out where they want to go now but these things don't play they grew incredibly fast and once the fruit sets the fruit also grows incredibly fast some of them look like they have down syndrome um, you get some pretty funky looking and I don't know if he's gonna straighten out or what like this one looks fine completely normal but some of these in here they're ate up like a bag of chips they don't look very good just they're just crooked and bubbly and stuff it's kind of weird and I did find one that had some maggots in it, like uh, something came along and impregnated my one of my cucumbers with, with worms, eggs and worms, so I just got rid of them.